To be honest, over the last 12 months, I kind of forgot about the Ocean Gate Titan. I recently watched all of the U.S. Coast Guard hearings regarding the tragic loss of the Titan live, which were conducted between September 16th and September 27th, 2024. Some of the expert witnesses were a fantastic wealth of information, but more importantly for me is that some video of the wreckage on the ocean floor was finally released by the Coast Guard. I have always believed that the carbon fiber hole failed in several large pieces and not into a million little pieces like the simulations I have seen, and that is exactly what they found, several large pieces of the hole. In fact, the pieces were far larger than I was expecting. Having now seen what the remains of the hole looked like, one thing immediately struck me. It is very curious how it broke into pieces that were the full length of the hole, almost like it failed in quadrants, and the fractures were in fairly neat lines considering that there was five sub-layers, over 660 individual layers in all. It then occurred to me how this would have happened. In my previous videos, I showed how the two interface rings were connected by the four flat connecting pieces, or struts, that also doubled as a place to fasten the exterior shell. Although they may not 100% meet the definition of a strut here, that is what I'm going to call them. I believe that when the implosion occurred, these struts basically cut through the hole, so to speak. Or they could have even been the cause of the implosion, if we could point to a single factor as being the cause, which I believe there was actually multiple factors. I pondered this for a while and discovered something else interesting, which I really didn't pay much attention to until now. If you look at these struts from the side, something becomes evident. In this cross-sectional view generated by OceanGate for a presentation, you can see that there is a step in each end of this strut. I surmise that these struts were made this way so that wires and similar things could pass under these struts so that they would not interfere with the placement of the exterior shell pieces. So why does this matter? Let me explain. In a previous video, I described a way that the carbon fiber hole could have failed by a process called stress risers, which can cause a localized failure that can grow into a catastrophic failure over time. I guess we could also consider this cyclic fatigue. Going back to these struts, in addition to the interior and exterior rings on the interface rings, there would have been eight more places where an edge is being pressed into the carbon fiber hole on every dive. In addition to that, it may have also caused at least eight stress points on the hole, making the hole slightly out of round at those locations, but not at the interface rings, which would have remained round. This could have also contributed to the apparent delaminations between the five sublayers, although it's difficult to know if these delaminations occurred on every dive or not. It's likely that they did. So let's review some of the wreckage. Here we can see the aft dome with one large piece of the carbon fiber hole, which is still attached to the interface ring. The other end is frayed where the five sublayers delaminated. You can also see the twisted and broken remains of these struts here. Notice also that some smaller pieces piled up in the aft dome. In these full length pieces of the hole, you can see how the hole has split in fairly neat lines, approximately equivalent to one quadrant of the cylinder. In any case, my theory still is that stress risers ultimately led to the hole failure and that it may have happened in one specific location, possibly where these struts had to step in them, but I'm not going to attempt to make a guess on specifically where it occurred. Looking at the debris piled in the end of the aft dome, it would seem that the hole failed towards the hatch end and everything got blown towards the back, but that's just pure speculation. One other thing brought up in the hearings is that three of the eight acoustic emission sensors were apparently not picking up any activity or very little activity, which is suspicious. In a previous video I did concerning the real-time monitoring system, this was something I pointed out could be a possibility. In other words, too much glue could have made those sensors a bit deaf. This unfortunate tragedy illustrates why all these various interfaces between different materials on a carbon fiber hole is problematic for a submersible.